heard things that we kind of go through a taxonomy almost of, of how crisis proceeds. You know, it proceeds typically through a, um, a catalyst it, it, and it proceeds these periods of regeneracy when public authority is revived. Uh, and it often goes through more than one of those periods. Um, and, and finally, though, it reaches a consolidation and a climax when society knows that it's in um, a struggle for survival, ultimately. And that's what motivates this, this, uh, this public mobilization. Right? So the, 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 the psychology of urgency is required for the fourth turn, right? Without that, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't happen. Yeah, right. You you don't get a resolution off the other end of it. And and ultimately then you do get the resolution. And typically historically these have been, you know, the treaties, the settlements, the great the great new um, you know, international uh, organizations or concerts or financial arrangements or you know, whatever sets up this new regime that follows it. This uh, whether it's a concert of nations, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, you know, NATO and the United Nations, or whatever it is, is 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 part of a durable settlement, which then lasts for a long time. Uh, it lasts through the next, you know, two or three seasons, right? And 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 this 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 is a this is a familiar pattern. I also talk about you know what kind of conflict that usually is required, and and. These often are categorized in terms of, you know, external versus internal conflict and, uh, you know, sort of the civil war scenario versus the, um, you know, taking on the world or taking on an external uh, actor. And, and typically, many of our conflicts are, are a little bit of both, right? In other words, it's a little bit of uh, partly internal, partly external. A great example in American history was the was the um, was the American Revolution, which uh, patriots like to think in retrospect was you know an, an external struggle against uh, uh, Britain, uh, but actually most of the fighting and dying was among colonials themselves. I mean, it was a civil war, and at the time in the 1770s and early 1780s, it was referred to part participants more often as a civil war than as a revolution. But we forget that, particularly in the South, there's tremendous backcountry violence between, you know, Tories and and and, uh, and Whigs. So it's a spectrum, and very often in a civil war, the losing side wants to bring in an external power. Well, the Patriots did that. We brought in the French, right? <laughs> that's how we that's how we managed to get out from under the British. Uh, and uh, during the American Civil War, of course, the, the Confederate uh, states tried to bring in Britain and France. Uh, and, uh, and, and similarly, in, in, in earlier crises, we, we, see, we, we see the same thing. I think it's fascinating to me that in both of these two types, you know, you look back 10 years ago, um, and we weren't talking about geopolitical conflict like we are today, right? And that's like one thing that I think everyone's aware of today. Uh, we have a major land war in Europe, and we have uh, a threat of something big starting out in the in the, uh, uh, in, in the in the Western Pacific, right? Similarly, ten years ago, no one even did opinion polls on the likelihood of civil war in America, right? And in the last few years, these posts have been all over the place, and you know, roughly half of Americans think one is likely. So now whether that's just their feeling of the mood or whether they're properly perceiving that as likelihood, the point is, is that we weren't even thinking that way, right? No one even thought about the possibility. Now we do. This is characteristic of the changes that we've seen. And this the sense that the nation has to change to become all one thing or all the other, right? And by the way, the, those words are actually taken from Abraham Lincoln in a speech he gave in 1858. America will soon have to become all one thing or all the other. He was speaking about slave or non slave, you know, slave or free. Um, but it's we often think that we've never been here before. We have been here before. 
<laughs> you just have to be able to recognize uh, the signs that we're here, right? 